What's up, guys? I didn't see you there. Welcome to my gym. Just hitting some cable chest flies, get my chest warmed up for a workout later today. But I know why you're here. I know why you walked in on me doing this exact exercise, and it's because you've been on Instagram lately, and chances are you've seen some of your favorite fake daddy Gymshock athletes absolutely butchering this exercise. And then when you ask how come they do it the way they do, they just say, ah, it works for us. Just do whatever works for you. Well, let me tell you guys something. It wor do, it, do what works for you or feels good for you can have some really bad consequences. Now, I've talked about a lot of exercises on my channel multiple times, but why do we keep revisiting some of the oldest and most popular exercises or most common exercises like a chest fly? And it's because there is a wrong way to do something and there's a right way to do something, but there's also variations of the wrong and right way as well. And for a lot, a lot of you guys who watch the videos, you're probably not familiar with the wrong and right way variations because it's not your job. That's my job, it's my job to teach you. Unfortunately, when you're a fake natty, you can do the wrong way and all the variations of the wrong way and you're still gonna build a nice big chest. Why? We know why. So, I wanna take some time and go over the chest cable fly with you guys and make sure that when you go to the gym and you use this exercise, you not only know how to execute it with proper form, but you also know when to incorporate it into your workout. Um, the reason why I'm not gonna go over the bench variation is because pretty much, as long as you're shoulder packing, so retracting and depressing your shoulder blades, maintaining a slight arch in your back, and keeping your glutes on the bench, that's pretty much gonna put you exactly where you need to be to have proper form. So where you're holding the dumbbells and they're going over your chest, whether you're flat or whether you're on incline. But with the cables, there's a lot of room to mess it up because there's a lot of different positions on the cable machine and if you're putting the cables too high or too low, it's gonna completely change the range of motion of the movement. So, firstly, let's talk about the things that are done wrong and then we're gonna end the video with going over the proper height for all the exercises. What I see most with cables is, or, or chest flies in general, is that people tend to overload with so much weight that it drastically changes the form. You're supposed to only maintain a slight bend in your elbow, okay? You shouldn't be like this. Even with dumbbells, you shouldn't be going like this, because then you're basically half pressing the weight, which is defeating the entire purpose of doing a cable chest fly. Cable chest fly is not an exercise where you're supposed to overload with as much weight as possible to try to build a big chest. That's what the bench press is for. Cable chest fly is a really great exercise to maybe stat off your chest workout, maybe get some working sets in, get some blood in the area, work on your mind-muscle connection, or at the end of your workout, once your chest is already obliterated and fatigued from exercises where you, are, you can overload properly like the bench press or dumbbell bench press, and maybe you want to do a bit more volume, so then you come over to the chest fly and that's where you get that volume in. You're not trying to lift the entire stack, guys. But for those of you who are trying to lift the entire stack, this is what usually happens. So I'm not gonna put it on the entire stack because I don't wanna hurt myself making a how-to video of not how to do something, but I'm gonna put a little bit of weight on here. So what tends to happen is a lot of us, we might start out with proper form. And proper form is exactly the same as if you're doing it with dumbbells. You wanna pack your shoulders at your back and kinda step forward like this, bring your chest up, slight bend in the elbows, and come underneath like this, okay? You notice that my shoulders remain neutral, my shoulders are packed, and they're staying like that throughout the entire range of motion, and my arms aren't bending like this either. They're staying slightly bent. And what tends to happen as we begin to fatigue or if we're lifting weight that's too heavy, is we start to protract our shoulders like this, and we start to really lean over like that to try to hold the weight because it's too heavy for us, and then we start doing this for the chest fly and we end up going right through the shoulder on the way back and on the way forward, which is why a lot of you guys, when you do your chest flies, your shoulders probably hurt after because instead of coming underneath like this and flexing and squeezing that chest, you're doing this and you're pushing through the shoulders, getting very little chest activation or chest squeezing at the bottom of the movement. Now the second way, and this is where the, gym, the fake Gymshack athletes come in, because they're gonna show you that they can lift a lot of weight right? This is what tends to happen. You get the half rep fly where elbows are bent like this and you basically are pressing from here to here 
So this movement right here is more of a press, right? So pressing here to here, and then the tiny fly at the end. So press, tiny fly. Press, tiny fly. And that's really what's happening. A fly needs to be the entire range of motion, slight bend in elbows, flex and squeeze the chest the entire time, come back, open up the chest as much as you can, and bring it in. There's no point in having your elbows bent so much that this motion from here to here is basically the same as this motion right here. That's what's happening. Pressing, very little fly, okay? Not good. Not how you're supposed to perform the exercise. And if you're doing that now, you need to reduce the weight and understand that if you still have some power left, go back to the bench, grab some dumbbells, grab a barbell, hit some heavy sets on the bench, overload, and then finish it off with high volume here. As far as proper form goes, I wanna go over each variation that you guys are probably doing in the gym. Now, as you can see, for the high to low fly that I'm doing right now, I'm gonna lower the weight real quick. The cables aren't that high. They're only about as high as my head. A lot of us, when we go to the gym and do a high to low cable fly, because it's not really something you can replicate with dumbbells, that's why we do it on the cable machine, we just instantly go over and just put them up as high as we possibly can, forgetting that some of us are different heights, okay? Maybe if you're super tall, like 6'3", you need it to be this high. But when you're 5'10", like me, putting the cable this high is just gonna mean you're gonna have a much harder time packing your shoulders and then without even realizing it, even if you're keeping a slight bend in your elbows and you're trying to, I'm gonna try to force it, you're trying to force this the entire time the, the angle of the cables is pulling your shoulders up. So you might start off being able to hold it and keep your chest up and pack your shoulders, but as you start to fatigue without even realizing it, you're gonna be higher and higher and higher like this, and then chances are the last few reps look like this. Maybe not, you know, protracting the shoulders totally like you would with heavy weight, but your arms are still really high, your shoulders not packed anymore, and you're losing a lot of that chest activation. So if you're doing a high to low cable fly, it means you're trying to place a bit more emphasis on the lower part of your chest, which is fine, but you gotta set those cables up properly. And so what I like to do is, head height, a little bit above my head, make sure they're both on the same exact one. There we go. And again, as you guys saw when you interrupted me in the beginning of the video, <laughs> right here, and I'm still pushing down under my chest, but when I come to the top position, I'm able to keep my shoulders packed and go back down. Now the second variation is obviously just doing it right in the middle. And for this variation, you want your arm to be over your chest still. So you want to make sure that when you have your arm here, that's where the cable is. So it's on 10. We'll bring this one down to 10. There we go. And then for here, same thing. Take a few steps forward. Retract your shoulder blades. Chest up. Get a nice stretch. And then bring it in. Just like this. All the way back all the way forward, nice pump in the chest. And you guys can see the chest working right now, right? Chest is being flexed, it's working, and I'm able to squeeze my chest. If you're doing this bullshit, which a lot of people do this too, man, I see people in the gym all the time, usually with a Gymshock shirt on, doing this. And it's like, dude, just go to the bench and let me use the cable machine so I can do my chest flies. Slight bend and elbow, all the way forward, all the way back proper range of motion. And the final variation, obviously, guys, bring those cables down. And I would even like to go all the way down. I'll stop like one peg before going to the very bottom. There we go. And again, take a step forward, retract your shoulder blades, arch your back a little bit, solid foot position, and then we're coming up like this. And you'll notice, chest is flexed, shoulders, shoulders are still packed, and we're bringing it in. We're not doing this. Again, if you wanna press, go find a machine that's gonna allow you to press. You wanna do a fly, you wanna scoop your chest like this, flex as hot as you can. This is gonna place a bit more emphasis on the upper portion of your chest. This places a bit more emphasis on how stupid you are. You don't wanna look stupid in the gym. You wanna come all 
all the way up, all the way down. And I know, guys, I've been getting a bit more hardcore lately with some of these videos, but I'll tell you what, after going through the comments, and I do go through the comments, I've read so many from you guys saying how your eyes have been opened and how now you're not so much afraid to go to the gym and try different workouts because you know you're not going to hurt yourselves because you know where to get the proper information. And that makes me happy because like I said, I don't care about everybody else, I care about you. I don't care about other fitness YouTubers, fitness Instagrammers, I care about you. Making sure that when you go to the gym, you know exactly what you're doing and if you don't know what you're doing, you feel comfortable enough to come to me, whether it's on my videos, on the forums on my website, or on my app, where you can ask a question and get an answer that you can trust. All right, guys? Hope you have a great week. I actually have a pretty good chest pump right now, so I feel pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to go take advantage of that and maybe do some more of a chest workout after this video. Hope you guys have a great day, and as always, more good stuff. Hey guys, if you really enjoyed the tips in this video and you want to make sure you're not making any more mistakes on some of the other exercises that you're doing, check out this playlist over here to my Dumbest Mistakes series. I cover a ton of different exercises and what not to do. And I guarantee the next time you go to the gym and you apply these tips and people see how swole you are and they see you hitting perfect form on all the exercises, they're going to be like, be friends with that guy. Seriously.